Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to use the attack and defence tagging window for GEA and the dashboard. Uh, this is for, for use on Windows machines currently. So, firstly, when you've got the files, you need to put them in the, the right place on your machine. So let's just try and drag this window over here. So, on your computer, you'll have your documents folder and your NAC sport data folder. So the tagging window that you have, the .NAC cat file, needs to go in this categories folder. And you can have your own folders put in there, but just put the file in there, and that's what you need. Then the dot dashboard file, you're in NAC export data, you'll have a dashboard folder, and you can place it in there. Similarly, I've made um, folders for myself in here as well. So you have those files in, and then when you're in NAC export, from the main menu, select tag video, open your video, then you'll come into this tagging environment. If a different, uh, tagging window is opened up already, press this option and open up the one that you need. The dashboard, when you want to look at it, you press your dashboard icon down here. And then I've got a folder structure as you saw in mine, so I go and open up the dashboard. So you find it and open it, and then it will show here for you. Okay. So you can minimise this to not see it as you go through. The important thing is knowing how to use the tagging window. So. You have your video playing in next sport, playing pause to uh, playing pause the video with spacebar. And as you're watching, there's a specific flow that you have to do to, to tag those clips correctly and get the dashboard showing you the right information. So ignore what's happening in, in the game. But if we were in possession, I turn on this button in possession. So there's a manual mode, so it's going to stay on until it turns off. And it's important that that's on because it's how our dashboard works from it. And then when a player has a touch, I select which player it is, then I click touch, and then I click on the field where that happens. So player six has a touch and clicks here. And you can still be playing and pausing here. So I could pause, okay, player nine had a touch here, carry on, pause, player 10, touch here. Okay, so go through it whatever speed you need to. Then let's say there's a turnover. Or if the ball goes out of play, you can just turn this button off. Okay. Or if it's a turnover, I could click on out of possession because it automatically turns that one off. And now we're looking at tackles. So again, a specific flow we have to do. Let's say player eight makes a tackle. So you have to press player eight. Then you click tackle. If you want to go into the specifics of which tackle type, like we saw from Evan's webinar, then click one of these and then click on the field. So let's do another one, player eight, tackle, type of tackle, click on the field. Then you get the specific color points that relate to that. So always have to press tackle, then the tackle type, then click on the field. And then the, ball gone, the ball's gone out of place, so I'm gonna turn this off. And if we see on our dashboard, this will then start populating with that information. And it's important to do that flow because else these things won't calculate okay, in the, in the right way that you need them to be. There's a little key here reminding you of what the colours of each ones uh, mean as well. An additional thing you could do because it will just help you filter that information inside of NAC Sport is let's say it gets to half time. You can see down the bottom here we've got three descriptors which are automatically going in. So this will tell us that you know, the clip from the whole game, that's what all is. And if we're at the second half now, I can right click this one and deactivate auto add descriptor, right click second half and activate auto add descriptor. And what that does is that when I'm then going through and tagging these touches, so player, touch, tag, or out of possession, player, tackle, tackle type, where it is on the field, every time I'm doing that, these descriptors are going in automatically. So every single one had second half and all. It's just another bit of information you can have to filter through. So next we need to go and just have a quick check of what this looks like in the timeline. So now that you're in the timeline, you have your video player here and all your different rows of the categories you've got. If you click on a row, you'll start watching uh, the clips that are in that row. And you can use shortcuts like one and two to skip back and forth through those clips. So there's lo loads of tutorial videos on how to make the most of your timeline environment, your matrix, your dashboard, your presentations, etc, etc. 
a couple of things here relative to this tagging window is that if you open the graphic descriptor, so you press this icon, if you can't see that icon, take a look at your timeline profile settings, make sure that you've actually got that tool down in your timeline profile. So with this field open, our graphic descriptor, whenever I click on a row of clips for each specific clip, I'll see the graphic descriptor click points that relate to it. So I can see all of the tackles that we made, all the tackles made in this opposition possession, and this opposition possession. The other thing you can do is if you have your matrix tool here, this is where that first half and second half is useful, is that when you move this over here, so let's just move that, and our video that's here, if I go and select on something, let's say like all the actions from the second half, if I click on this column, I will then see results in my graphic descriptor that are going to relate to it. So I want to go to all of the out of possessions in the second half. I click that number and my graphic descriptor will then show me those filtered results as we go through. So you can use your matrix as a way of filtering information and then visualizing it in your graphic descriptor. And you can obviously all also open up your dashboard in this environment. So dashboard icon, choose where that dashboard was saved. And you can see all that information come through. The really powerful thing here is that when you click on any of those elements, you're going to watch those clips that relate to all of that, whether that's a number or whether it's a bar chart. So player eight's two tackles. I click on that red part of the graph and I can see those parts come through. The other thing you might want to do, rather than using that matrix filter, is if you press this option, dynamic dashboard, you can say, okay, only show me the results from the first half or this part of the video. Uh, you slide it along, press refresh, and then the dashboard will change um, the information for those elements. Okay, so you can see how the numbers are changing here. So just a couple of ways that you can really make use of that tagging window and dashboard. It's important to remember that you have to use the tagging window in that flow. So one of the possession buttons at the top, then the player, then either touch or tackle. And if it's tackle, you've got the other options there as well. Hope you found that useful.